the two and a half furlong marker where the runners begin the turn for home to preview the St James's Palace Stakes. Now, it's a race that generally brings together the horses that have run in the Irish, English and other European 2000 guineas. Power won the Irish version of it and it was a marked difference to the performance he put up at Newmarket. It was totally different to the 2000 guineas run by Heidi Stable Companion Camelot, who's gone on to other things over longer trips. Um, Power was quite muted that day and in Ireland he was a different kind of horse. He was very patiently ridden. We're here, it's just a short straight two and a half furlongs here at Ascot. That can catch out horses that are patiently ridden. Mm. Power is clearly a much better profile than he was before, but that short straight is something to bear in mind. I think it's something to bear in mind for Bourne to see as well, who ran behind him in the Irish Guineas. Yeah, it's a horse uh, I think might come out best myself of the horses who ran in the Irish Guineas. It's, uh, uh, they seemed at pains to teach him to settle there. I know they, they put the disappointing run in the English Guineas down to the fact that he pulled too hard, and it seemed to be the most important thing in the moment to get the horse to settle, and he did, but the way the race was run, which was steadily run, he found himself a long way back, mm. and the horses in front hadn't gone too quick, and he just was left with too much to do. I'd really like the way he finished off the race that day. Those are the principal horses who ran in the classic races for three-year-old Marlers so far. Let's hear from the trainers of some of the other contenders for the St James's Palace Stakes. We start with Cogito, who's made a great start to his career with two from two. What, what are his strengths? Uh, well, he's got a, you know, got a really good finishing style. Um, you know, he grinds it out. He, uh, he looked good in his maiden, but the way he did it at Sandown the other day was really impressive. Um, <clears throat> he's got an excellent temperament, you can do anything with him, he's a very straightforward, easy horse to deal with. What do you think, the, there was a, a little bit of cash in the ground at Newmarket, and um, probably a sounder surface at Sandown, any, any preferences do you think that way? Well, I mean, I've had a few out of the mare in the past, and they've all been sort of, they kind of vary on what ground they want. Um, I mean, I wouldn't like to see him on soft ground. You know, Frankie, I think, really kind of set out at Sandown to teach him a little more, you know, so that's, I think he probably could have won easier if, um, or won further, if that hadn't been the case, but it was important to get him in the mix and get him out and, you know, push him around in the race a little bit, which he did. Um, so I think it's, you know, he's a very straightforward horse, really. Uh, start with the St James's Palace. Uh, the Nile, who also ran recently, and also I thought ran very well. I like the horse a lot. He's got a good profile, lovely stride, good balance, and he could go and give a very good account of himself in a race like that. Fencing, another one of the horse who's been running well, tremendously this year, six in the Guineas, third in the Dante. He's bred to be a mile and a quarter horse, but in the uh, racing post last year, Camelot absolutely outclassed them, but I wasn't convinced that he wanted any further than a mile. Then we ran him in the Guineas, having missed his prep in the Craven due to a pricked foot. Uh, and, and he ran well, but he got a little tired. It's, you know, it wasn't ideal and the ground was testing. We ran him in a Dante to gauge his trip. He ran very well, but William got off and said, this horse doesn't get an inch over a mile. And he's built as a miler, but his pedigree says a mile and a quarter. But you know, sometimes it's hard to rehearse it at home to find out their trip. Also really like what they won at Chester, Arnold Lane. Uh, I know you've got options, but he's got a St James's Palace uh, entry. Uh, is that likely to happen? And what do you, you know, what's your, what's, what are his strengths? What do you make of him? Well, I think he's a very good horse. I mean, I, I, I copped him up last year by running him on fast ground. I didn't know that at the time, but uh, um, you know, we've had a few little niggles with him, and he's just not been. You know, we've we've got problems. We've had problems that we can't haven't been able to run him like, <laughs> like Mick Shannon likes to run his horses. Um, so. Yeah, he, he's got an awful lot of ability. He's got, he's, you know, and he's in the St James's Palace. He's also be put in the jersey. Uh, and he's, and he's, the, the um, what's the, Brita is it the Britannia? We'd have to look at that. But the way I look at the Britannia, you know, you could enter him in the Britannia and say, we're going to run in that, and you can be drawn, you just don't know, you can be on the wrong side of the track and you might as well have stayed at home. Um, and he's not a horse that you can run, as I say, regularly. And I think you've got to space his races. It looks to be, everything looks to be coming right at the moment. The ground's going to be perfect. We, he would need a little bit of cut. He's one of few horses of ours that do need a bit of cut, but uh, that's because of the niggly problems he's had, you know? Um, feet problems mainly, but uh, he's a very high class horse. I don't know where I'm going. I'd love to have a go at the, you know me, I'd love to have a go at the St. James's Palace. 
So now we concentrate on the emerging contenders, the horses still to reveal their true potential. And Cogito is a horse that I know that you like after his two wins so far. I do. I'm, I'm not sure what the Sandan victory stacks up to exactly, but what I do like is his attitude. I do know that he improved a great deal from his previous starts, that he is progressing. I think ultimately he might want further than this, but I think stepping up to this grade of company mm. might bring about a strong B run race and that will suit him well. Steve, make the case for the Nile. Very impressive first time out of Lingfield. Got beaten next to about Newmarket, but I think found seven furlongs too sharp. I think as a galloper, I think the mile will really suit. One other horse I think is worth a mention is Daddy Longlegs, trained like power by Aidan O'Brien. Uh, he made all to win in Dubai. He won the UAE Derby, and I think he'll go well on this course. Uh, he made most of the running in the Irish 2000 Guineas. I just feel that if he gets on the lead and mm. isn't harassed, this is the type of course that would suit him. Well, this track favours front runners. I mean, Pagadatori has exploited this endlessly, hasn't he? On the horses ridden that way, so I can see it suiting Daddy Longlegs. I think Power will win the St James's Palace Stakes and confirm his place as the leading three-year-old miler of the season. I'm going to go with potential. I'm going to go for the Nile. I think he'll improve at a mile. I think he's progressive. And I don't think that those horses that have raced in the Guineas that are meeting here in the St James's Palace Stakes set too dizzy a standard. I like the chance of Born to See. He's been slow to realise his full potential, but I like the way he's settled in Ireland. I think he's getting there and I think you might see the real deal in the opening day Ascot on Tuesday.